November 13th dawns cold and frosty. Jared Mills is back on the new farm, hoping to call in one of the several great bucks he has on trail camera. Well, sun's just coming up here uh, the morning of November 13th, and this is definitely what November morning should feel like. Everything's frost covered. Back on this farm that I'm trying to learn, um, so we're in a brand new spot yet again. We should be able to see a lot. Uh, yesterday I saw a bunch of does bedded in this timber, so hopefully that's a good sign that you know we're in that period where it could be some tough hunting due to uh, bucks being locked down, but definitely gotta be in the tree in case uh, one does go for a cruise. And I'm excited to see what the sit brings. Well, it's 8 o'clock here, and uh, it's been a fun morning so far. We saw a bobcat. Uh, it looked like it was stalking a raccoon. It's kind of cool, but we unfortunately couldn't get footage. Um, but we've also seen two shooter bucks. One was a deer I called Rocky, and I'm about 90% sure it was Rocky. Uh, going across the CRP field, we just, it was a real quick glimpse. Not able to get footage of him either, but the second buck was the deer I call Ali. So really good to see him out and about. He's just cruising. He looked like he was on a on a dose trail. He's really trying to pick it up in the CRP. Uh, wasn't interested in the calling at all. So just seems to be perfect conditions. It's really really cold, but uh, as long as the movement keeps up like this, we can endure it. Jared is shooting the Hoyt Defiant bow with DFX cam system. This is one of Hoyt's advanced cam and a half systems that eliminates any concern of cam timing. This new cam also rolls over in a way that increases the bow's effective length, which means the string angle is flatter, moving the peep closer to your eye for more comfortable and more accurate shooting. Cabela's is the best manufacturer we've found for producing quality footwear for deer hunters. Some of the Midwest Whitetail Pro staff favor rubber boots, while others use lace-ups. Cabela's makes models in both styles that are scent-free and perfectly fit to the task. Low light accuracy requires a sight with bright pins. Fuse sights have some of the brightest pins on the market, making it possible to take shots right up to the end of legal shooting time with total confidence. There are only three ways you can get busted in a tree stand. The deer can smell you, hear you, or see you. To reduce the chances of being seen, we wear the best camouflage we can. Realtree's open patterns perfectly blend into the hardwood timbers that we hunt. Jared is in the middle of the action, 
while 75 miles to the southwest, Scott Peruca also has bucks cruising by his stand. Well, it's about 8.30 and we just had another encounter with a, what looked like a uh, promising young three-year-old. He was on a mission headed somewhere else, but uh, pretty cool deer, it was fun. It's good to see some of these deer are still out cruising. inside 30 yards. I don't know. I didn't like the sound of that hit. He had big tall tines. I'm shaking now, man. His, I wasn't shaking when he was here, but his main beams came up and swooped up. He was cool. He was super cool. <sighs> I hope I made a good hit on him. I don't know. I didn't like the way that sounded. It sounded fun when I hit him. That's how fast it changes. Crazy. Well, here's the arrow. I'm just afraid that shot was too high. I mean, it passed through and there's blood all over it, but we saw where he cut in up here. We're gonna see if there's any blood and um, go back to the house or the office or something. See where we hit that deer for sure and come up with a plan for uh, looking for him. Scott is hunting a small area planted to frigid forage autumn quick plot. These small food plots can be good all day long during the rut if they are located back in the timber close to bedding areas. In such locations, you need a blend that holds up well to deer pressure and thrives with limited sunlight. It all paid off for Scott when this nice buck followed a doe into the food plot. Scott's arrow passed completely through this buck at 25 yards. He's shooting the 5mm Easton Full Metal Jacket, and the shaft's small diameter and solid weight are perfect for whitetail hunting. Bright fletchings allowed Scott to see the impact and identify his hit immediately. In some situations, that can make a huge difference in deciding when to follow up the blood trail. The Ozonix mounting system is perfect for tree stand hunting. It's fully adjustable so you can always point your unit in the correct direction. As the wind changes, just swivel the mount. Scott used his mounting system to position the HR300, which helped him get a shot at this nice mature buck. Versatility is one of the most important features of a good food plot cedar. It must be able to plant a wide range of seed sizes at a wide range of rates and place them in the ground at the correct depth for each application. The RTP Genesis is ideal in each of these regards. Versatility is one of the things we like most about this cedar. When going deep into public land, we always use the muddy backpack straps to carry our stand in. They attach to any muddy tree stand 
and they make carrying the sticks and the stand much more efficient. As Jared's morning wraps up, Scott Pruka and friends take up the blood trail from the buck he shot two hours earlier. Well, we're back here uh, where it all happened. Uh, looking at the footage back in the office, everybody thinks it's not going far, and uh, I was thrilled to see how it looked because I was nervous. Just made that funny noise when it hit. After looking where the arrow went through, I think we got double long. So that's good. It's been two hours and uh, hopefully it didn't go too far. I got him. I got him. He's right there. I see He's right there. I can see his belly. Awesome. Yes. Heck yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. See him? Yep. 40 yards from where I shot him. Yeah. He looked like he was starting to stumble a little bit when he ran in here. Nice! <laughs> well, that was the easiest track job ever. Well, we got him out to the field here and and uh, literally where he cut into the woods, I don't think he went another 40 yards. So he made the mistake of going after that uh, spike eating the autumn quick plot because um, I don't know why he would go pick a fight with a little buck like that when his doe just crossed the trail right underneath us. Because if he would have went that way, we wouldn't have got a shot at him. It was just it would have been too difficult. It's coming straight at us and straight under the tree. So we lucked out. The, uh, the little spike eating breakfast did him in today. This is actually a deer. I'm gonna have to look back at pictures, but I saw him come in and I don't didn't really know what deer this was. I'll have to look at pictures and see if if I do know him, but you know, I, I saw the rack and I saw he was a decent buck. And after that, I just was concentrating on his body as he walked right in front of us. And I could tell he was a mature deer. You know, he's at least a four year old, maybe a five year old. And uh, he put on a show, and it's been a tough season. I haven't had a lot of close encounters. There's a couple bucks I'm after that um, are certainly still on the farm. I get pictures of them all the time, but they just haven't cooperated. So couldn't be happier getting this guy on the ground. Zach Fehrenbaugh and Aaron Warbritton head deep into the public land, first by kayak and then on foot. It's November 13th and Aaron and I are at the river unit today. We came back originally with kayaks and we got to a point where we couldn't go any further. The water's just really drying up in this creek bed that we're using to access this piece. We had to come through a lot of stuff to get here and now that we're here our wind's swirling more than we'd like, but if any deer are cruising, we suspect them to work this transition line of the hardwoods and the willows that are down in the bottom along the creek. Like I said, we've got a pretty good funnel here with these two roads intersecting. Scott ran his Muddy Pro Cam 12 on time-lapse mode and managed to pick up this buck during early November. Time-lapse allows you to set the camera to take a photo at regular intervals during certain times of the day. 
We generally select the last hour of daylight. This is a great feature to use when learning how and when deer use small food plots. I've been in a number of hunting camps over the years and hunters rarely argue over which bow or arrow is the best. But it can get pretty heated when the subject of broadheads comes up. Bow hunters have strongly held opinions about what is the most important on this critical part of the equipment puzzle. At Midwest Whitetail, we've been shooting rocket broadheads for as long as we have been in business. We aren't biologists, but some of the top names in the business swear by the more than 65 minerals found in the trophy rock. It contains not only the macronutrients that you find in other products, but all the micronutrients needed in proper balance for a healthy herd. No one really thinks about mobility in their ground blind until it is too late. Having a good seat that allows you to pivot quickly and quietly to cover any window in the blind is a definite asset. That's why we use the redneck blind chair in all of our ground blind hunting. Back on public land, a young buck passes Zach and Aaron's stand, but it is a different set of footsteps in the leaves that grabs their attention. He's coming right over here. It's about three o'clock and about 10 minutes ago, we had a doe come in and bed down, and then two younger bucks uh, pushed her down the hill and they ran right underneath of us. Right about the time they got back up the hill and were going the other way, Aaron looked down and saw a guy walking down through the willows down there. And he ended up walking right up to our stand and he told us that uh, he had shot a buck yesterday and he wasn't gonna give up looking for him. And we totally understand that. The only bad thing is, is he's looking, or he has to look, because I'm sure that's where the deer went, right where um, we're kind of expecting the deer to come from and where those those three deer we just saw came from. So he snuck up there pretty quiet. It's windy. I don't know. We will probably stay here is what I imagine. We don't have a lot of time to move. So figure we'll probably just sit it out, and uh, it's public land. It's what happens sometimes. Yeah. Well, the night's coming to an end, and we ended up seeing pretty good movement, even though that guy walked through here. The only bad part was it was all two and three-year-old bucks and does. We think when we come back here in a few days, we're going to push further to the south. There's still a lot of land that goes that way, and it's even harder to get to, so if there's a mature buck in here, that's where we'd expect him to be. Zach and Aaron continue to press deeper into the largest tracts of state land. With the rut winding down, this is no time for caution. 20 miles away, on a different piece of public land, Sean Ferendorf hunts one of the crew's best areas. Sean is roused from a mid-morning nap just in time to see a mature ten-pointer heading directly toward his stand. Drowsy, he misjudges the age of the buck and decides to pass a decision that haunts him when the team reviews the footage later. In many states, the middle of the month signals the start of the firearm season, but in those states still open to bow hunting, there remains a pressing challenge. We have hit a lull that can last several days. It is the deep breath before the rut's final gasp. Patience is the key, not panic. There are still good days to come. 
And while hope remains, we will continue chasing November. <laughs>